everyone, Alexa Dunn, and today I thought we could do something a little bit different. I've gotten a lot of requests from you guys in comments, how do you do your eye makeup? You should do a makeup tutorial. And I've always thought it's slightly ridiculous because it's a writing channel and I am not a beauty tuber. So there's a little small cameo for my cat, which is on theme. But I thought, you know, while I'm getting ready to film some other videos, I will film an eyeshadow tutorial of the rest of my makeup on and just show you how I do it while I talk about my cats. Cause you guys always ask about my cats as well. And I was like, you know, I could do a little story time about how I got my cats while doing my eye makeup. And for the very niche audience out there that wants to watch that, you get the content that you asked for. Today I am going to be using the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette because it's one of my favorite buys of the fall. It's a very easy to work with blendable formula, so I, won't, I know I won't have problems with it ahead of time. I have some eyeshadow formulas that are a bit trickier to work with. This is what it looks like, so I'm gonna obviously be going for kind of a neutralish look, but one of the ones that gets a lot of compliments is whenever I use this shade range, the magenta, and I love the magentas. It's actually why I bought this palette. I love pink eyeshadow, not everyone can wear it. But mostly I'm gonna be showing you the techniques that I have learned by watching YouTube. And that's the thing, better people than I have done this content. And I will link down below to some of my favorite beauty tubers and or specific videos. Like I've watched specific videos for learning how to deal with hooded eyes, for learning how to do eyeliner, etc. And that is a disclaimer. So I'm gonna take off my glasses so you can see my eyes. I mean, from here on out, I literally can't see anything. So this is gonna be really, really interesting. I have hooded eyes. So basically that that's when you open your eyes and most of your lid disappears and you have that like hyper crease. And because of this, they're not severely hooded. They're kind of mildly hooded or middle of the road hooded. But because of that, I discovered over time, I can't follow a lot of eyeshadow tutorials the way that they are on YouTube. And some of the most successful beauty tubers have beautiful lids with beautiful lid space. So they can do all these amazing things. And so I've learned over time how to work with my eye shape and do an eyeshadow look that works for me. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. I use different colors so that it looks a little bit different, but basically I'm showing you the one thing that I just do over and over again. And honestly, it's really easy to learn. It's versatile. Even if you don't have hooded eyes, like you can do this on your eye shape. But if you do, I will hopefully be able to help you, including when it comes to the liner. I had to learn how to do special eyeliner, the, the wing for my hooded eyes. And I do want to talk about tools because if you're struggling and you don't know why your looks don't look the way that you want them to, I will say that the real game changer for me was buying brushes. These are the two that I'm mostly going to be using today. And these come from this. This is a Sephora eye brush kit. It was about $40, which at first felt really expensive to me. And I'll admit, I haven't yet kind of gone off the deep end with brushes. There are really expensive brushes. Like you could spend $20, $30 on a single brush. So $40 for a kit that has five brushes in it, I think is pretty good. And I've gotten really, really good use out of this, specifically the fluffy blending brush and the packing brush, the medium packing brush. These are kind of my holy grail brushes, but you can also buy brushes on a budget. Sometimes they're not great. It really depends. It's trial and error, but one set that I can recommend, so far I like it, it's this ColourPop set. I think this cost me $20. And it looks like this inside. So you get a ton of brushes. You can see I've already dirtied it up. Uh, so sometimes I do my looks with these, so it's got a flushy, <sighs> flushy. It's got a fluffy blending brush and some interestingly shaped little brushes. So I, I use this for some of my detail looks, but over and over again, I honestly find myself coming back to this old Sephora kit. I've had this two and a half years. So if you're going to go out and buy brushes and you can afford $40 or wait for a Sephora sale, I honestly highly recommend this one. It comes in a little beige pouch. Uh, they still carry it for sure. I checked, they still have it at the store. It's my favorite. But we are also going to be using our fingers today. Uh, the Tati palette, several of the shades perform better in my opinion when you use your finger, which is nice. Now, I don't think you can do really sophisticated eye looks without some good brushes. I'm gonna show you the technique. But what's nice is 
good old fashioned finger still works in a lot of cases. Now I promised I'm gonna talk about my cats. I thought it'd be fun to talk about how I got my cats, like the how I got my cats story time. And they might make appearances cause I'm sitting on my couch and they love to come up. Figure that'll kind of fill the time while I'm doing things with a brush. So I'm gonna zoom you in. I sound like such a basic bitch beauty tuber right now to get a better look. Okay, we're not going super tight cause again, not a professional beauty tuber. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna see how this goes. So I'm gonna start with, it's, everyone calls it the transition shade. You're basically gonna put a shade right here where your brow bone is. It's usually gonna be light, similar to your skin tone, or at least something that's gonna blend up nicely into your brow bone. This is to basically give a base to all the other shadows that you're gonna put on so that it blends nicely when you open your eyes. And in terms of my eyes, I didn't use anything. I just have moisturizer on. I have personally found I don't like eyeshadow primer. Like I have some that I use for like when I really want a long wear day, but uh, you don't need fancy eyeshadow primer. I find that my oil of Olay provides a very nice base for makeup too. So my favorite transition shade from the Tati palette is Aura. It's your basic bitch pinky peachy color. And of course on me, cause I am very pale, it, it blends very well. It almost disappears, but it's all about creating like a base for things to stick to as well. So you're taking the big fluffy brush and you're basically going on the brow bone. You just swoosh it back and forth and then into the corner and you do this. This is like a C motion. I do it pretty far up onto my brown bone because as you're going to discover with hooded eyes, I have to really exaggerate the colors because otherwise they literally disappear when I open my eyes. And I'll do a little bit of that to build it up. In this case, you really can't see the color. As I mentioned, it blends right into my skin, but that's how we want it. Uh, if sometimes a transition shade, like it can be one that shows up. If we're a darker shade, you'd be able to see it. And I'm gonna blend something into it so you will see it. And of course, you're gonna repeat that on both sides. So let's talk about my cats. Uh, so Teddy is my baby bunny. I've had him since 2008. I got him in Boston and I got him from the MSPCA. I am a shelter animal person. I've always had shelter animals. Uh, when I was a kid, like we got both of our dogs from the animal shelter. Um, and I started volunteering there when I moved back to Boston after living in London for a while. I worked for my university. Um, and sometimes you just do like a, a round motion like that. So it's the back and forth and it's the round. It's whatever you need to kind of blend it. Um, and that's because I desperately loved cats, but at that point couldn't have one. So I started volunteering at the MSPCA. I specialized in the cats. They had an amazing cat room and I loved spending time in it, helping people adopt. I loved matchmaking for people because I got to know the cats as I was volunteering and I'd be like, oh, what are you looking for? And then I would help them out. Okay, we're going to do our second color. So I'm going to go into Soothe. And so you know about this palette, the bottom row is mattes. These are, there's like sequins in them, which some people don't like them. I don't mind them. They're basically slightly shimmery mattes. Then we have a metallic row. We're gonna have fun with that. And then lastly, glitters. I don't know if I'm gonna do glitters today. This is gonna be a kind of basic look, but so it's basically matte. And this is kind of like a, beigey brown shade and what I like is when you mix it with Aura it's quite pretty and we're going to blend that on top of where you have your transition shade not to completely replace it but you're basically going on top and slightly under it and blending them together. And the other thing that I did at the MSPCA, uh, I got, they got to know me cause I was there a lot. I would go every single week and volunteer for hours. I really enjoyed it. And so I got in my cat time, my cuddle time with other people's cats or just cats. They came to trust me and eventually I kind of got upgraded to working in the back room, in the intake room for cats. Oh, and also cause you know, a writer, I wrote the uh, cards for the cats. I write like the descriptions. I really enjoyed that. And it was a combination of that and I had a camera and I was interested in photography that I ended up being the person who would go in the back and take pictures of new cats and write short descriptions for pet finder. That became one of my duties. And it was also good cause they, they came to trust me because the thing about working in the back, so the MSPCA is not a no kill shelter. They are low kill. Most of the animals are adopted out. I am pleased to say. And like, I could tell, like I would see 
the intake in the back versus who would go to the front. Almost all of the cats went to the front, I'm happy to report, but every once in a while there was a sad or tragic situation and they trusted me to be able to kind of handle that. Something I should say, when I'm blending this in, I'm kind of pulling into the corner of my eye a little with a circular motion because I'm basically creating like a little, almost like a boomerang. <laughs> um, of the color. So you can see when I open my eyes, I have like this, it's almost like a halo effect here. This is what you're creating, kind of that background when you open your eyes. And again, hooded eyes, I've learned over time, it's, it's going above the brow bone so that when you open, you kind of get the effect that you want. And so long story short, when I finally got a job that could support me and a new apartment where I was allowed to have pets, because the first year and a half that I lived in Boston, I couldn't have a cat, which is why I was volunteering. I immediately, like, I think we had just moved into our new house, like just signed our lease and moved in. Within two weeks, I was like, I'm getting a cat. So yeah, I just went to the MSPCA and I walked the room and looked at all the new cats and Teddy just like spoke to me. He was in a cage on the bottom row and like he like reached out his paw. And what I loved about the MSPCA, and it is not the case in every place we'll talk about when I tried to adopt a cat in LA, um, you could open the cages and like interact with the cats. It was totally okay. And I just I sat on the floor and I opened his cage and he like poked his head out and he was just so lovey and wonderful. And I was like, that's my cat. And it helps that I have always had kind of a fascination with orange cats. I've always liked ginger cats and I kind of wanted one. Should probably dip into the next color. So since I'm going to be doing a magenta e look, before I go into this, I'm actually gonna dip a little bit into Ritual, which is this brown color. This is also my go-to next step if I'm doing a more straight neutral eye, like a almost like a smoky eye, though this isn't technically a smoky eye technique, but I'm gonna do that because it helps to blend into the magenta. And uh, tap off your brush with especially darker shades if you have too much. And the Tati palette specifically is very pigmented, so I do kind of do a tap off so that I don't get too much. So now I concentrate right on that outer corner at the bottom of the lid going into the corner, and I basically do like almost like an open Pac-Man mouth thing. And I am doing this back and forth and blending and blending it into the crease. Blend, 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 blend. Cause it'll, especially with the darker colors, it might start to look patchy, but it's amazing what a little blending out can do. I'm just blending it in. If I need to, I can just tap back into the pink and like run it over. You'll get a hang for all this with trial and error. You, you can just play with makeup until you get it the way that you want it to look. I just tap back into that beige again to add a little more depth, mid-tone depth. I'm just getting it the way I want. And we are gonna return to kind of the darker colors. Okay, while I do the other side, I'm gonna talk more about the cat. So uh, when I picked out Teddy, first of all, his name, uh, he is named after Harry Potter. And the reason his name is Teddy, which is Theodore Lupin, of course, Teddy Lupin, is that I was a hipster bitch and I wanted a Harry Potter name because I was deep into Harry Potter fandom, but I was like, I can't have like a basic Harry Potter name for my cat. And the very obvious choice for a ginger cat, of course, would be a Weasley name. And I was just defiant and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I didn't. And what I find really, really hilarious about it, now I love... Teddy as a name for a cat. It's really adorable. Uh, but the irony is I'm just kind of swooping up my corners because it gets a little out of control because you do kind of want to create a shape. Um, what I think is really, really funny is um, personality wise, he's 100% a Percy Weasley. And Percy Weasley was one of my favorite characters from Harry Potter, which I know you're going like, wow, you're weird. I agree. Uh, but it's so hilarious that I was just so stubborn that I was like, I'm not gonna name him after Weasley. And personality wise, I really should. Uh, my joking, loving nickname for him is Grumpy Cat. He's not actually grumpy, but he has resting grumpy face. A little bit of it, not like full on a grumpy cat. Um, and he's, he's my persnickety cat. Like he's like 
full on sweet. He's a sweetheart. He's such a good boy. I've had multiple people. My roommate from Boston was the first one. When I was moving, she was like, do you want to leave your cat? I was like, no. She loved Teddy that much, which I really appreciate. <laughs> and then when I moved to LA, my boss took care of him for the first two weeks I was out here until I could find an apartment. And because I knew my boss before I moved. And she also was like, Teddy is the best. I would keep him. I'm like, I love Teddy. He, he has converted people who say they don't like cats to liking cats. So we're ready for magenta. So I'm going to tap in. This is a really intense color. These are all mattes I'm playing with so far, by the way. And this is to build the look basically on the outer part of my eye. I almost always do metallics on the inner part as we're going to go over because I personally like that finish. I like the way it looks on my eyes and I kind of like the look that it produces. Again, I told you, I'm really basic. I just do the same eye look over and over again with slightly different colors. So we're going to tap off. So you have to be very, very careful with the shade because it is so intense. So you're going to basically go over the same thing that you just did where you did the dark brown, which is kind of that outer corner but also going a little bit on top of it into the center and you're just going to blend it in. So yeah, I'm a hipster, but my joke to myself with Teddy is he kind of looks like Theodore Roosevelt. And so I'll be like, yeah, that's why I named him Teddy, even though it's 100% Teddy Lupin. Um, when I got him, the vet said that he was uh, three to five years old. So I don't actually know his exact age. Also, just look how beautiful intense this color is. It's already like transformed the look, which that's the thing. This magenta is a point of no return color. Once you decide to put this into your eye look, you have a pink eye look. Not pink eye, literally, that would be bad. Not everyone can pull off pink as a color, but I'm grateful that I can um, be, in large part because my eyes are green. So um, he's three to five and because he was so friendly, they guessed that he probably like escaped from someone's house, that he wasn't feral, that he belonged to someone. But at the same time, he was three to five and he wasn't neutered. So that was interesting. They had to do that before I got him. So now that was 2008, his gotcha time. I wish I remember the exact date, but it was July, 2008. So we have been with each other for almost 12 years. So that means he is 15 to 17 years old, which is vaguely terrifying because I want him to live forever because I love him so much. <laughs> I'm very emotionally attached. Um, but yeah, he's my muffin. I, they're both my muffin. That's one of my favorite pet names for my pets. Um, so when you see a tail in a video, that's always Teddy. So sometimes I'll just open my eyes and look in the mirror to kind of see what the open eye look is. And I might kind of build up in specific areas to kind of create more of the color story I want. The hardest thing is to get the two sides to look the same. And my two eyes don't perform the same. Uh, like this eye will be patchier a lot of the time. Maybe it's because I always do it second, but very often my left eye will end up looking way cuter. My eyeliner on my left eye is almost always better. Uh, they can be cousins, not, not twins. It's fine. Sisters, sisters, not twins. Just like eyebrows, because my eyebrows aren't the same either, for sure. Okay, so now I'm more or less done with mattes. I'll come back a little. Um, and I haven't even used my packing brush yet. That's later. We're going to use our finger. And I'm just going to do the one that I do all the time, which means I'm probably going to hit pan on this color any day now. It's the Aura row again, so the peachy pink. But this metallic is just so beautiful. So I literally just swirl in with my finger, get it on my finger. And then I start at the inner corner of the eye and I just start like patting it on, going up on my brow bone a little and moving towards the center. See, it automatically brightens my eye. This is why I like to do this over and over again. It just like really creates that pop. But now we have this weird situation going on here where things aren't really like blending together. Looks a little weird. So what I do is I just take the same finger. I don't even wipe it off. And I will dip into the metallic shade of the magenta and a little more gently and carefully, I go right over where kind of the peach metallic meets that matte area just to kind of blend them together with my finger to create a transition area. And this is one case where I'm going to wait to do the other eye because I use a different finger. <laughs> So this is where I bring out my packing brush personally, because I like to really have a defined outer corner. And I'm going to go back just back into that matte magenta, tap off the brush, and very, very carefully, just build some more color. I just dipped back in. 
because now I want more intense color on this outer corner. I also just realized I did not clean this brush. So I think I've got a bit from my last eyeshadow job. But that's okay, we go with the flow. We, we roll the punches. I'm going back and forth right here. Deep in that, a little bit up in the crease. I'm going back in with the metallic. I want more in the center. Like none of this is like exactly the same. You do kind of play it by ear as you do it. I actually just tapped into the sequin shade just to kind of add a little sparkle and depth. So I did all that about Teddy and I'm getting close to done. There's still eyeliner in our future. And I haven't talked about baby Pita. So Pita is also my muffin. Seriously, I call both of them my muffins. I'm just gonna do the other side while I talk about this. So repeating the same steps with a different finger. So when I moved to LA, oh, I should say, when I lived in Boston, my roommate also had a cat. So Teddy basically had companionship. It just wasn't my cat. It was my roommate's cat. But it was really clear that he liked having another cat around. So I knew that when I moved that he was going to be lonely. Uh, and that was confirmed when like I actually got out here the first two weeks in the apartment with just him and me. I could tell he was sad. He missed the other cats. And so I know I wanted to get another one so that I could have like a little bonded pair. There's nothing nicer than a bonded pair of cats and cats legitimately, they entertain each other. If you have a restless single cat, often the solution is get another cat. You do have to be careful in terms of picking out another cat. because of course cats are, I mean, this happens with dogs too. Like some dogs don't like being with other dogs, but with cats, you do have to be very mindful of their gender, their age, their disposition. I knew that Teddy could get along with both boys and girls, but my roommate had a girl cat. And so I thought, oh, I'll get a female cat. See, I'm telling you, this left eye looks better than the right eye. It's not fair. Why does that happen? all the time. So when I got to LA, I thought, okay, I will go to the animal shelter and I will adopt a cat because that is exactly what I did in Boston. Uh, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> so the shelter system is really, really different in LA. It's all public municipal shelters, whereas the MSPCA, which while a public shelter, is also part of a broader nonprofit. It's a cousin branch of the ASPCA. I think the MSPCA was the second animal shelter founded in the country like ever because Boston is so old and it, it just had a way of functioning that I really liked. The cat room was great. As I mentioned, it was easy to navigate. They always had 50 or more cats at a time. You could play with them, interact with them. Never a challenge to find a really good animal. And then I went to the closest shelter here to me. First of all, there aren't a lot of shelters in Los Angeles and I live in the city. They're in greater Los Angeles County. So they tend to be more in like, I can't even call it the suburbs, but far away from me is the point. And they're very high kill here as well, which is incredibly depressing. Like I don't even want to think about it. Point is I went to the nearest one, which was still like a 40 minute drive. And it was just very depressing. It felt like an animal shelter. It was not like the MSPCA. They had this tiny cat room that maybe had 12 cats in it. The cages were all padlocked. You had to get a volunteer to open it for you to interact with like a single cat. And they all were kind of lethargic and sad, which isn't their fault, those poor cats. They're just wasn't a cat that seemed like the right fit. I didn't feel a connection. And you're like, oh, how wishy-washy. But it is actually important. And we're gonna talk about like how I actually got PETA. So I started to look into alternate methods and this is where I discovered, oh, I've stopped. I should keep doing my makeup. So before I continue, a uh, very, very, very delicate step. I do not always do it, but I'm going to do it now. Oh, the light's changing, great. This black is deep as hell. It is great. It is a very, very good pure black. It's one of the best blacks I've ever had in a palette, but a little goes a very long way. I'm only gonna tap in once and then really tap off the brush. Cause what I'm gonna do is very, very, very carefully deepen my corners <laughs> even more so that the where the magenta already is, there's a teeny tiny bit of black and it's just a little bit more dramatic. So 
Animal rescue just works a little bit differently in the Los Angeles area. It's, well, literally all about animal rescues. Um, there are does hundreds of them. They're all individually started nonprofits. They really vary. Some are sketchy, some are not. Um, Los Angeles County definitely ends up having problems with hoarders every once in a while where, like, someone gets busted. It's a whole thing. It's a very interesting um thing to adjust to. So there's a lot of rescues and fostering as a system. And it's actually a long dramatic story that I don't even think I should tell in full in this video. I tried to foster an animal and I ended up getting entangled, this is the short version, with a sketchy person running a rescue. That's the thing. They come in all shapes and sizes. Clearly someone who, if she didn't have mental health issues, she was definitely a liar. And she concealed information from me and lied to me about the cat that I was supposed to foster and basically dumped me with a very, very sick animal. I'd only been in LA for two weeks. And at that point, I mean, now too, I mean, Teddy was really, really sick last year and I had to do sick animal care. And we got through it because he's my baby. Uh, but especially nine years ago, I was not qualified at all to do medical care for cats. I never did any of that in the animal shelter. And she told me the cat was like, had one day of antibiotics left and would be fine. And I administered the one day of antibiotics. This cat was not fine. It had a bacterial infection that is highly contagious. It was not litter box trained. That was another lie. Um, really poor sick cat, sweet, but incredibly ill. But because the cat had been in a hoarding situation and literally couldn't use a litter box, um, I couldn't let it out in the apartment. I had to keep it in the bathroom because when I did let it in the apartment, it had um, trigger warning for grossness, uh, explosive diarrhea on my rug. And here's the long story short. Teddy got really, really sick. The cat infected my cat with a bacterial infection that is highly contagious and can kill cats. I'd been here two weeks and I don't deal with that kind of anxiety on a good day. I was so terrified for my cat, but mostly this poor animal, I, it was so beyond my skill. I'd only been working at my new job for two weeks as well. And the first week I started my job, I got the flu. So what a time in my life this was. I was also lonely, I'd left behind all my friends. Long story short, I realized I was incapable of caring for this animal. It was beyond my capabilities. And I knew that the best thing for that animal was to be with a far more experienced foster. And so I had to give the cat back. Otherwise, I had been thinking I wanted to foster to adopt, but it just wasn't going to work out, especially because Teddy got sick, blah, 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 blah. So then I had to start Teddy on antibiotics and I did give the cat back. And that weekend there was an adoption fair. So once or twice a year, I think it still goes on. There's a best friends animal society adoption event. And there was a different rescue that I had been communicating with and I offered to be a volunteer at the event and help them work the event. So I did, I did a day of volunteering with this group, just kind of like standing there and like helping to process adoption paperwork for people, help them handle cats and on one of my breaks, I did a turn of the room and I saw PETA in a cage. Just this gorgeous, fluffy ginger Maine Coon. And I was like starstruck because so Teddy, when I first got him, he's fluffy and he's beautiful. And I was like, what are you? And I determined eventually that most likely it's time for eyeliner. This is the scary part. And we'll finish off after with inner corner as well as below. I've never done eyeliner on camera and this is terrifying. First of all, brand. This is the Sephora Brush Tip Liquid Liner. It's basically a dupe for NYX Epic Liner. Um, I've transitioned to using this because it's a few dollars more expensive, but it lasts a little bit longer. Um, NYX Epic Liner is a very good dupe for Kat Von T's liquid eyeliner, but it basically gets like runny and splotchy after a month or two of use, which is not ideal. This lasts longer. So I just happen to like brush tip liners. I know a lot of people like felt tip, but felt, felt has never really done it for me. So I use brush tip. And so this is my current one. This is really scary. So eyeliner is really, really hard. And there's a dozen different ways to do it. I do have to be very specific because of the hooded eyes. If I get carried away with liquid eyeliner, all the eyeshadow is going to disappear because, well, you can see my limited lid space. It has to be an incredibly thin line and then there's a special technique for doing the wing. I learned this from Alyssa Ashley. There was also an earlier Tina Young video that helps me with some of this technique, but it was Alyssa Ashley who her technique for doing the wing cracked it open for me. So you're not going to see me do one perfect thin line in one swoop because I can't do that. So 
watch. It's gonna... Mm. So I always start not quite the middle, not quite the corner, like slightly in between those two, drawing a very, very thin line. I steady my hand with my pinky somewhere on my cheek. Hopefully there's no makeup on that pinky. Be careful, I've done that before. Okay, and I do... Oh, I'm so nervous. Teeny tiny line that I kind of... I try to go very thin along the lash line out to the corner. Your corner can get a little thicker. And then once I do that, I go back to try to get the inner corner. Okay, this is a start. <laughs> very, very thin line. Obviously that looks patchy and undone because it's patchy and undone. Then I always fill out the corner a bit. I always have trouble because my blonde lashes actually obscure what I'm doing a little. So I just do my best, fill it in, because this is going to be part of the wing, or it's going to flush into the wing. Sometimes I'll close my eyes. It's okay for it to be thick on the edge, so I'll do a little extra. You can kind of see I'm developing the shape. So PETA. Um, who's named PETA now? <laughs> and was not at first. Oh, I was talking about Teddy being a Maine Coon. I was sure he was something, and I just did a lot of research into cat breeds. I was like, I think Teddy is part Maine Coon. Now that I have PETA, who I think might be half Maine Coon, it could be full, except he's not perfect breed standard, so I think he might be half. That means Teddy is probably not quite half, he's less than half, but regardless, there's Maine Coon in them, and there are certain traits, and the reason I kinda wanted another Maine Coon is just that they're the sweetest cats. I'm pretty sure a lot of Teddy's disposition is his breed traits. And they're fluffy, and basically by getting a long-haired cat, which I did not set out or intend to do when I got Teddy, I fell in love with them, including the bad stuff. There's so many hairballs, and you don't want to know about when their butts get dirty. It's real bad. All right, we'll save. Normally I do one full eye, but we're gonna save the wing. I'm gonna do the other side while I finish talking about Peta. So yeah, he just stood out to me in the cage. I asked if I could take him out to play with him. He honestly wasn't too cuddly, uh, cause he was 10 months old. He was basically a kitten. Giant though, like full grown. And they're like, oh, he's 10 months old. I didn't set out to get a young cat cause I had previously gotten an older cat. And what I like about older cats, this is me doing my part for the older cats of America. Older animals, period. Same thing with dogs. Their personalities are set. Puppies and kitties can really change. Like when they're young, first of all, bad habits can get set into them if you're bad at raising them. Um, but also just personalities and animals can really change between when they're babies and when they're proper adults. So what's nice about adopting an adult is that what you see is what you get. They're set in their personality. Uh, they usually, they shouldn't have behavioral problems like a shelter should disclose if they do. I'll tell you the one caveat with Teddy that I don't have with PETA, but there's pros and cons. Anyway, he's, t PETA was 10 months old, so he's a little energetic. We bonded enough. He, he didn't really sit still, but he was beautiful. Have you seen that cat? Maybe you haven't. He's beautiful. If they, they're napping now. I will try to get them on camera before I'm done. So again, repeating the same step. As in all things, my left eye is always easier. And that sucks. It's probably because I'm right-handed. I don't know. Build the outer corner carefully. Time for wings. Here's the thing. Uh, the rescue, because it was a rescue who was at this adoption event, they said he was a girl. <laughs> so I think I'm adopting a girl cat. And I filled out the adoption paperwork. I was able to take him home that day uh, at the rescue. His name was Tiffany, like legit. His paperwork said he was a girl. Pete is very, very fluffy for context. So, um, but already, well, it turns out he was already neutered, but they said he was fixed. Cause you know, this rescue neutered and fixed all their animals before adopting them out to control population, makes sense. Um, my guess is that they got a litter from someone, multiple cats, boys and girls, and they literally mixed up the cats. Cause that's the only thing to explain how two weeks later, so I adopted PETA and everything's great. I named him Ella, cause I thought he was a girl. Like Ella Fitzgerald. Oh no, wing, okay. I'll finish the story first. So long story short, I caught him bathing. It became incredibly clear he was not a girl. Peter was a boy. So I had to rename him. Uh, not that he couldn't be very secure in his masculinity with the name Ella. That would not have been a problem. But I like, 
I like very <laughs> specific appropriate names. And I don't know, he just was such a Peter Malark. A giant, kind of tubby, he's so cute. Ginger, cat, who just wants you to love him. That's Peter. he is my eager lovey boy. Teddy's like a little persnickety but sweet, and Peta just desperately wants you to love him. So he's he's a Peta cat. So that is how Peta came to be and how he came to be named Peta. And happily, though he is a boy, both of my boys have bonded very, very closely. They sometimes struggle for alpha. That is definitely a thing that happens, which probably would have happened even if one of them was a girl. Female cats are actually very, very territorial. So they fight every once in a blue moon, but mostly they snuggle and they bathe each other and they're adorable and I love them. Let's wrap this up. The wing. Okay, so scary. So the way that Alyssa put it, I'm gonna link to her video cause she's better than I am. So you can kind of see when your eye is open where the end of the crease of your eye ends. Again, this is for hooded eyes. So you're gonna start your line out here using kind of a visual, you can actually do like a tracing thing where you like make marks, but I've done this enough that I don't have to anymore. Where you start the edge so that you know that when you bring it in, you will not cross your crease. That's the important thing. So you start out here and then you bring it in. Oh great, it's drying up. That's really great. Eh. What a day for this to get a little dry. And then you just start filling it in basically. You can take your time, as you can see I take my time, to create this little V. It's not my best wing, but it's functional. Uh, the one nice thing about wearing glasses is that it only has to be functional because I'm just gonna put on glasses. Now, you see when I open my eye, you can still see most of my eyeshadow, but that I had to come up on my brow bone so that you could really get the color. That's why. One of the hardest things is getting a crisp line and now go figure, I was like, oh, I use this because it lasts longer. I think it's on its last legs, whatever. The other side is much easier. For some reason, I find it easier to do my left eye, to do an actual proper kind of tug in. And it always just looks so much cuter. So I just basically repeat the same thing. Start out here, drag it in to connect to the line and then fill in. Yeah, I ruined it, it's fine. So when you mess up, hey, just extend it, make your wing larger. Sometimes in a real pinch, I have to drag the line up over the lid and I do lose some of my eyeshadow space, but see that wing is so much cuter, but it's fine. Last but not least, I'm actually really gonna half-ass this because I feel like it. I'm gonna take this medium fluffy brush. It's not even the best brush for this, but I don't care. This is me assuming that you only go out and buy two brushes. It's fine. So I'm gonna use something here because the last time I used this, I was using black. This is called a color switch. It's basically just like this foam thing that sits in a little kit. I got this from Sephora. Uh, BH Cosmetics, but you can get them at Sephora, lots of places, and you basically just swirl your brush in it. It takes the, the color off of it, that's all. And then I just, I go back into the same metallic pinky that I like, because it's a pretty color, and I just go over my lower lash line a bit. Nothing fancy, because I'm not trying to make it look cute. It's because I'm lazy. I know that there are beauty tubers who go like really all out on their lower lash line and I am not that person. With my glasses, it doesn't really matter. So the final thing that I'm gonna do with the, oh, gotta blink because the other thing, it gets in my eyes, I don't like it. I'm gonna go into that same color with my pinky finger like this, Just swirl it in. You'll see why it's my pinky in a second. And we're gonna do our inner corner. There's already some stuff there, but I'm just gonna firm it up, like just tap my pinky in. Both sides. Blend a little. Inner corner highlight. Last but not least, mascara. This is their Real by Benefit. This just happens to be my favorite. I like the wand. I find it's really good for separating my lashes, but you can literally use any mascara you want. I don't go overboard with mascara. I do not wear false lashes. I like to do, like, it's a little bit dramatic. Like my eyeshadow is a little dramatic, but still naturalistic. And when I'm not blabbering on about my cats, this really doesn't take me that long because I have a lot of practice doing this. Actually, practice is the magical word. Uh, the thing with eyeliner, I just want to let you know so that you feel a little bit better. 
I've been practicing this for two and a half years. I was not as good at liner at first, and I'm just confident now. Ta-da! See, because I put on my glasses and half of it disappears anyway, but I really like my glasses. So this is the look without. This is the look with. Another reason that's why I do the metallic in the center though, it's to get something to pop from behind my glasses. Same reason, like I really notice the difference when I don't do the eyeliner versus when I do, but I only wear eyeliner on camera. That's the funny thing, I don't wear it out in my real life. Okay, just to finish it off, I fetched my poor sleepy kitties. So here's Teddy. It always looks like you're torturing a cat when you're like, hey, look at the camera, because they don't know the difference. Teddy's such a good cat. They're both really good cats. I feel really fortunate. Both of my cats have a very friendly disposition. They're cuddly, but not too cuddly. Like, they're not needy. Come here, Muffin. Come here, Sleepy. Here's Peta. Can we get his purring on camera? He got his big kitty butt. He's such a good baby. <laughs> He's a good boy. Aren't you a good boy? Here's Teddy. Peta. <laughs> See, they're good boys. They like each other. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. My face is all good to go. Now I can film a video. I'm gonna film a reading wrap up now. I hope you enjoyed this, learned something, how I do my makeup. You learned a little bit about my cats. I rambled too much, but what else is new? <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments any questions that you have about the makeup or the cats. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I guess in this case, happy experimenting with makeup, playing with makeup. <laughs>